Hello and welcome to the last episode of Season 2. This is Episode 9 of the SAS Showdown. I am Colin McCarthy and once again I am joined today by... Hey everybody, I'm Rose Layton. Yes, Rose. So, how can you believe another season of SAS Showdown? We've covered security uh, in our last episode, and obviously there have been some security incidents this week. I'm guessing there's going to be security incidents every week, and I bet... Uh, I, <laughs> for I the bet rest of time. <laughs> for the rest of time, and security will be probably re-discussed, uh, re-evaluated, uh, again in season three when that comes back in the new year but this time we wanted to uh, end uh, on another practical aspect of SAS management and that is uh, the principle of least privilege if you have least privilege often you don't have security problems but role-based permissions uh, what do they look like how do we manage them where do we get started what should we be doing Let's define least privilege access because I think there is some confusion out there in the world about what least privilege access means. Least privilege access does not mean you do not have permission to do your job. It does not mean nobody has permission. It doesn't mean everybody has permission. It means you have exactly as much permission as you need to accomplish the tasks that you are assigned to accomplish. Exactly. Exactly as much. No yes. more, no less. That is and a that, that access definition. is added and revoked as needed. And audited. Right? And audited. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to audit if you're automating it. Like, uh, well, I, I, that's not true. I, you do need to audit it on a regular cadence, but yes, you need yes. to audit it far less if you're um if you're automating. But um yeah, I've I've definitely worked at places that um, gave everybody super admin access. Colin, how about you? Yeah, often that was the default security permission that everybody was given. Right. Um, obviously, super and admin. And on small teams, I think it it makes sense. And I mean super small. I'm talking like one or two people. Yeah. And obviously, when we use the term super admin, we're talking about Google Workspace in a um, group. Uh, yeah. Uh, in everything else, we're just talking about the highest level of admin Yeah. Access. In, in active, uh, Microsoft Active Directory, Office 365, that could be a global administrator, I think is the term for that, um, mm -hmm. which is often yeah, sort of- Yeah, uh, that's an owner or a primary owner. Right. Yeah. Um, every SaaS platform has a similar- um name for whatever its higher highest level is um yeah. but yeah it, when i joined uh i was the first it support person and i was given the uh the keys to the kingdom um i needed to be able to do everything so i was a super admin well, yeah it's not like full, anybody else was gonna do it <laughs> full rights on on the network etc but you know as teams grow uh, as I grew, as the whole practice uh, developed, and also thankfully Google Workspace, Google Apps for Business, and uh, G Suite, as it's been known throughout the years, also changed as well um, and did add additional uh, roles that people could be given. So you didn't you didn't have to give super right. admin to everybody. You could do right. Um, you could give somebody a help desk admin or a security admin or a billing admin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, very thankfully, the ability to do custom roles, which yes. I think custom, custom roles, roles is where it's at. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Everybody should have and be using custom roles so that you can more granularly define what uh, permissions people have. And then with that, it's often easier to, you know, uh, add that user or revoke that access. You know, if somebody only needs to do something for a specific period of time for an investigation or cover somebody else's vacation, if, you know, uh, a senior IT support specialist or deputy network manager or, net, or you know, IT manager is on vacation and somebody else is stepping up, you could, for a period of time, increase somebody else's permissions to cover it. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. But, but well, how, so how do you, how do we go about designing custom roles? Because obviously the the pre sort of pre-canned stock ones are nice if yep. you want to like get started with role tier-based permissions. Um, 
but they aren't always what you need them to be. Like they'll have access to do things that like don't really make sense. And so that's what, that's why we say custom roles is kind of the, the best option because then you can give people, um, you know, something that's suited to your organization and your domain. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to think about like what other stuff they might be getting access to, even if you don't use it. Like, um, like the, I think the IT or the help desk administrator one for Google gives you access to a bunch of device management. Well, if you're not using device management in Google, that's it. Not only a useless permission, but a potentially dangerous permission. Like somebody could poke around in there and do things that you don't want them to do. Right. Yes. Yeah. I've, yeah. I have witnessed the danger of uh, a first line help desk person being given uh, domain admin rights on an active directory domain was doing some poking around, wanted to have a little look, clicked on some options, then didn't click cancel to get out of that screen, click save, a whole load of syncing happened and it was not pretty at the end of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Then thankfully Just because they wanted to have a look around. They wanted and like, to have a look, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's, that's fine. We want to encourage that kind of learning, but um, it should be done preferably not in prod. Right. Um, and or with n no ability to write those changes, um, you know, you can see them, but you can't save them kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, so I guess, Colin, how do you get started designing a role based permission? First of all, you, you've got to identify what gap in in the permissions does the person currently have? that's mm -hmm. stopping them from doing a task that you want them to be able to do or delegate to them. And sometimes right. this can, you know, come out of a change that you might have done on your domain. If you're, you know, pushing out MFA or something or doing context or error access, you need your staff to be able to reset MFA or investigate, give somebody a backup code, you know, check their device mm -hmm. in, in devices if you're doing context or error access or, or some other function. Um, that's how they've, they've normally come around. You, you identify, um, what additional permissions somebody needs. And, and that can be through their development. If they're, you know, doing very well at their job and you need to give them, you know, a, a extra tasks to, to carry on mm -hmm. developing them, then you can create those roles. Um, so it's identifying the need and then looking through the Google admin panel and trying to work out. Uh, what it actually says in the bot in a little tick box and what it will actually give. Um, because I do find that some parts are very, very granular and then other things aren't very granular. Um, when you tick something like it used to be um, to do the do document transfer, you had to give somebody services access which allowed them to like view all of the services in Gmail and everything else and calendar. But and it gave turn them, them on and off. Right? Turn them on and off. But it did give them the ability to do document transfer. I think now that's been changed and it's thankfully a lot more granular and there's a permission purely for document transfer and they don't get the ability to see all the, the settings that they previously could. Um, yeah. So the one thing I found is, the, is that sometimes you have to go back into the custom roles and see what new sub sort of, uh, you know, yeah. Um, permission Yeah, if you're has, not has keeping your added. ear to the ground on what Google is releasing, yeah. like if you're not up to date on all of that, it's, I mean, and it's still good to do like yeah. every, every so yeah. often. So it's, you know, looking through it and sometimes, you know, I've given some of my team uh, delegated API access. So it's not that they need the permission in the admin panel to do something. If they're using app script and they want to, you know, oh, yeah. do They're some automation stuff. or reporting in, in licensing, then you need to give them, you know, the delegated permission for, yeah. um, for the licensing API. So I, you know, you scope it out that way, work out what they want to do. And then before I, I give it to the, the team member and ask them to test that they can do what they want to do. I always, I, I wouldn't say always, I normally and have the majority of the time uh, assign that role to a test account I have, and then I'll go in and okay. double check what permissions that actually, you know, gives the person, have I given them too much? If it is a little bit too much, can they just see stuff? 
And as we have said, you know, seeing is great. You can you can have a look and get an understanding, but not necessarily change any of the settings. Um, yeah. And that's sort of where we start. And then the one thing I do do is when you get the option to name your uh, custom custom role, give it a very descriptive name. Use the mm -hmm. description box to you know explain what it's for, so that. You know, the next the next super admin that comes along and wants to assign somebody a role doesn't have to recreate it or doesn't have to question, you know, why does this team member have access to this role? What does this custom role actually mean and do? Yeah. It's, you know, it can be more descriptive. Um, well, and if you're, especially if you're doing like roles based around specific job responsibilities, it can be helpful just to name them after those job responsibilities. So like, you know, IT dash. Mm-hmm help desk tier one, right? Or IT dash help desk tier two, um, or security dash investigations or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, because then when somebody, when you're doing an audit of the roles and you see somebody's name and you see which, what the name of the admin access they have is, it's pretty self-explanatory, like yes. why they have that admin access. And then all you have to do is confirm that they're still part of that group. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Right. And the other thing is to do is to maybe have a change management document, a document or a change management process um, mm -hmm. where people, you know, certainly on, on a large team or and it's a good practice even on a small team, a small team, you know, have a change management or an approval process that, you know, this team member needs this rights. This is what mm -hmm. we did. This, these are the rights that we gave them. It was approved by X, Y, Z. And then you have, I was you know, going to say, if you're doing any kind of compliance whatsoever, you might as well just get into the habit of paper trailing your admin access yeah, um, and not allowing people to request their own admin access. Um, because that's a, that's a key tenant of like SOC 2 and, you know, other compliance. Um, yeah. 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 We, um, sometimes we just email you know amongst the team like you know uh as per your request i've you know given you this access you know even though it, yeah, you know, they might yeah. have asked for it verbally or it came up in a in a discussion on a, a google meet call we then yeah you know, and we would, we would do it in tickets um generally and like just put in a ticket to paper trail that like so and so was given admin access and like what role it was yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously it's, you know, you, you and I live and breathe Google workspace. Um, mm -hmm. you know, this is SaaS showdown. There are other, there are other SaaS applications out there that do, should have, uh, some form of role-based permissions. Mm -hmm. In my experience. I, yeah. I'd like to not... call Slack out on this one in particular, because I mean, first of all, they're <laughs> permission structure is kind of a mess. Um, you, you are either a workspace admin, a workspace owner, or if you're on enterprise grid, you can be an organi organizational admin or organizational owner. And then in addition to that, they have sort of like pre-canned roles that can only do like one or two things. Mm -hmm. So they have like a channels admin, a legal and compliance admin, and... Billing, um, I bet. It, yeah, I think billing is one of the other ones. Um, and those additional roles are great because those are really intended for like channels admin is good for like internal comms teams, mm -hmm. um, legal and compliance is for your litigation teams. Um, and then the billing admin is for your, you know, procurement or finance. Um, but in terms of IT roles, like workspace owner and admin do leave a lot to be desired in terms of what people can do. Um, especially like when you expand out to enterprise grid and you want people to be able to do certain things in enterprise grid, but you don't want them to be able to do everything in enterprise grid. Like we had really big issues where like, you know, you couldn't deactivate a user at the org level because IT is only a workspace admin or owner. Okay. Um, and so like they didn't have access to the org level deactivation or they didn't have access to troubleshoot provisioning issues at the org level. Right. Um, and so like we would have given them and like security needed certain access to, uh, to do, to do some things. And then, but they were getting all the access that it had because those roles are the same. There's no like security admin. Um, 
so yeah, so I, I would say slag leaves a lot to be desired in this field. Um, I think the, the main players, Google, Microsoft, GCP, AWS, like yeah. those guys leave a lot. Zoom has really good permissioning by the way. I haven't, I haven't really looked at that. I know you that, don't but... like Zoom, but they yeah. do have custom roles. And I I designed some um, some really nice custom roles for like, like marketing could do all the digital content management, okay. right? Oh, for, like to display on the stuff. Right. Okay. Well, to display on the meeting room, like stuff. Okay. Um, so they could like add their own graphics and do whatever. All right. Um, well, that's yeah, good. yeah. That's- Good to hear that there is a, a you know, you and I have someone blast- outside the main players is doing something good. <laughs> yes, yeah, and we we should call out Zoom for doing something good. If they could do role based permissions very well, good for them because obviously mm-hmm. you and I have blasted a few SaaS companies in uh, episode four of this season. Um, SaaS companies that we thought had sucked. it was our spiciest episode um, ever, guys. Yeah, Go back and yeah. listen if you didn't. Yeah, uh, and I know that we have spoken about in season one. Um, either episode uh, four or uh, six, I think it was, when we were talking about um, uh, IAM, Identity Access Management, and different SaaS platforms. The problem we have with some of these uh, SaaS companies that, you know, uh, uh, security or administration, I would say security, but administration and the permissioning, permissioning for admin staff always seems to be the very last thing that they think about because... It's not mm-hmm. flashy and it's not going to win over it's, end yeah, users. Yeah, it's very, very common to like see a new SaaS tool and they basically only have two versions, like admin and user. Yeah. And that's it. Um, and I would, I would hope, I would encourage them to invest more time in that um, and just think about like what are the types of things that people would need to be able to do, mm-hmm. um, but that their IT administrators, like what are the other types of things that their IT administrators wouldn't want them doing, right? Right, like, yeah. Um, you know, like, and, well, and I think for for especially um, specialized tools, so like, you know, let's say like Figma or, you know, like things that are used by one team, design mm-hmm. teams, marketing teams are, I think the more obvious candidates, um, finance is also, I think, a very specialized niche for SaaS. Um, it's worth it <laughs> to make an IT-focused admin role because I need to be able to manage SSO in those systems. I need to be able to manage users in those systems. Yep. I need to be able to manage like very specific things, but I don't need access to this like anything else. I don't need a license. I don't like, I don't want access to these systems in some cases. Like think about like IT and HRIS systems. Like we've talked about that mm-hmm. before. There's some stuff in an HRIS system that IT doesn't need access to. No. And we shouldn't be able to touch, but no. because they're lumping these, these IT related permissions in with like these global administrators we can't separate our own access. Yeah. And so yeah. It becomes is... it becomes a real problem. Like technically we have least privilege because that's the only option, but yeah, it's makes... not really least privilege. <laughs> yeah, and it makes the operation problematic if you if you don't have the the access that you yeah. need. That's why, you know, more granular controls are needed. And it, it is it is a shame that it's not, you know, one of the initial steps of of the the CTO and the chief engineer thinking of you know scoping out their platform. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago there was a new um, one of these uh, SaaS management platform app uh, applications that you know was doing spend management. They they had full admin access or nothing, so you could see everything on the domain. Mm-hmm. You know, you could see all the billing information, you could delete everything, you could add random users to be admins, or you could do nothing. And when we first saw it and considering buying it, it was like, you know, you need to have some admin controls because we need to make this application useful and we need to be able to give people, you know, delegated access to it to do investigations and et cetera. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll work on it. It'll be out in six months. 
six months later oh no it'll be out six in months. it will be out in six months and then six months later oh no it'll be out in six months and they're like oh no now it's not a priority we're doing something else so 18 months later they still didn't have um any yeah. role-based permissions and and we weren't a customer um I, and i think it is yeah. something that, I, that it has to be if you are considering purchasing an application yes you're going to look at the end user experience, does it do what the end user needs to do? Is it going to be secure? But also how can mm -hmm. you manage it? And not just you as the IT director or yeah. IT manager, but can you delegate those roles effectively to your, you know, first line support people or your the, you know, the other irony members? of it is that I think this calls back to the security conversation we had two weeks ago where, you know, we were talking about how the weakest link is still people. Um, in any organization. And the, that is one of the, the problems with having this sort of dichotomy of like admin user, um, because we are relying then on people to not do things they're not supposed to do. And even if you train them, and I, I mean, you can sign as many contracts as you want to like make sure that like, they're legally bound to do the things that you want them to do, but like accidents still happen. Mm -hmm. They happen to me, they happen to Colin, they happen to other people. And like the best thing you can possibly do is design your stuff in such a way that either you've created the roles that people need or you're allowing them to create their own roles because it really sucks when I have to say like, oh, my team is going to be admins and we have a bunch of people that I need to train now to be admins because they need access to something and I can't give them a limited access. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like I, I, I hate being in meetings where I'm like, by the way, you have permission to do X, Y, and Z. Please don't do that. <laughs> Don't yes, even touch yeah. it. Don't even yeah. look over there. <laughs> it is, you know, there, there is no IT Hippocratic, Hippocratic oath of, you there know, should the, be. there should be, there should be, shall do no harm, but uh, it is, <laughs> it is the, you know, the human condition, if they have more rights than they have there, a lot of people are prone to, to look around and, and do things that they, that they shouldn't. Um, yeah. Um, and and not and not all of it is is malicious. Some of it is just over eagerness on on wanting to help, etc. Um, but those permissions, sure. those cre creeping permissions, can cause problems. So, um, what's do you have any practical advice on how to audit or control, monitor those those permissions on a regular basis? Um, well, the first thing you can do is when you create them, document them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because the, the UI is not often easy to see. I used to have like basically stacks of pages mm -hmm. of like, you know, I, I would say, you know, the Slack role, I call them the grids. They're the permissions okay. grids. Um, and so, you know, they've got a bunch of check marks of, in a bunch of columns for like each line of permissions. I quite like um, that. Yeah, I love them when SaaS companies provide them. If they don't provide them, I will create them myself because it can be really difficult to understand what permission somebody has um, for a given role if you don't have a grid. And if you're doing custom roles, it's easier to create that grid yourself um, and just have that as a... Um, you know, something that you can kind of show mm -hmm. people and display. And then you just have to make sure you're updating it, obviously, anytime you make a change to the role. Um, in terms of auditing, those grades become a lot more useful in determining, you know, like, is this the right role for somebody? Is it not? Mm -hmm. Because you, it's a easier place to kind of read and see like, oh, they don't have these permissions or, oh, they do have these permissions and we don't really want that. Um, yeah. And then, like I said, when, when it goes back to like naming your custom roles, naming them based on the job responsibility is usually, that's my preferred way to do it. Um, you can also like give people multiple roles. I don't yeah. recommend doing that. Like layering multiple roles on top of each other. Interesting. So I was actually going to... Unless it's like a job role and something else. Like I wouldn't want like user management to be a role and then like i don't know um 
device management to be a role because I can't see those two things being separated. Like, why do you need to do device management but not user management? Like, would you rather have somebody who has six yeah, different so maybe, admin roles? Yeah, maybe the device management isn't a good <laughs> example. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I actually like nested permissions. Um, well, you can't nest them. Well, yeah, they are. Well, you can. Maybe they're not nested, but you can assign somebody to multiple permissions. So there is a yeah. SaaS management platform that we know of that does have a, a very good. Um, selection of tick boxes where you can go through and you can give you know people uh, very specific permissions to different parts of right. um, of the application the one thing you can't do is you cannot and you if you create your custom roles you cannot assign a user to multiple custom roles so if you want to give somebody an elevated permission you then have to create a custom role for them for that elevated permission Oh, interesting. Which is, which is so that's just like a, a difference in how they're managing custom roles. Yeah, yeah. You can only yeah. you can only you can only exist in one role at a time, which becomes very difficult when you're when you've got a relatively large team okay. and you want to so give people that's, different. In that sense, you have one main role that everybody's yeah. kind of getting, and then you yeah. create custom roles for these sort of ad hoc things. Yes. That is fine. Yes. What I mean is like instead of like creating ad hoc roles, because you start with no ad hoc roles. Instead of creating ad hoc roles, you would create basically sections of the the single role that everyone needs and then give that to like all the people and so they have like six roles it's like combining the right. help desk and security admin thing okay like if you if you give everybody help desk admin and you give everybody security admin it doesn't make any sense we had we, we had one at my previous org it was literally just supposed to give people the ability to put in support cases with google um that's all it did. Mm -hmm. um, but I found that it was applied to super administrators. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they probably meant well. I mean, they did, but like, it's just not useful. And, and I found that when auditing. And so it was one of those things where I was like, first of all, they named it terribly. It was <laughs> like lega legacy enterprise billing something admin. And I was like, and the only thing it did was like give people access to support. So that was that was the first, the other thing I changed was I changed the name of it so that we knew what the heck it did. Um, but yeah, I I found it frustrating in the sense because like I would find it on people's profiles, but then mm -hmm. I would also find other admin roles on their profiles, and I was like admin roles that gave them access to this thing already, and I was like, that's not good. Don't do yeah. that. The good thing, oh, and this is another plus for Google Workspace, if you go into a user, so before you'd have to go into admin roles and then find all of your, your roles and then add them to each role, I do like it now that you can just go to the user and then go to the admin roles and put the little tick boxes mm -hmm. in, in or the little dongles or toggles for all of the access that you want them to give. The only the, the, the one annoyance I do have, custom roles, you cannot limit a custom role based on OU. It's only the stock roles you can limit on OU, which is very mm -hmm. uh, annoying. And you can't apply admin roles to groups either. So you can't dynamically manage your roles, um, which would be great because now like um, putting people into groups based on dynamic fields, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. um, you know, like, Eh, let's say you got office IT, right? They don't need to be able to manage things in the S the San Francisco office if they're in the Chicago office. And so like being able to manage people based on their group membership or OU membership, right? Is, yeah. is ideal, especially when um, you're working at complex organizations, they don't necessarily have to be large. I don't want to call them like enterprise organizations, but complex organizations where there are clear dividers between those things. And if you want to automate on that and reduce a lot of work for yourself, it can be really hard to do it with admin roles. Um, you'll still find yourself doing a lot of it manually. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. What should we close season two out on, Colin? I don't know. Uh, a, a joke? 
You can tell should, a joke. Should we close it on a joke? Uh, and I can't take credit for this because I, I did see it online. Um, but I don't know. Has anybody else been really annoyed by this? Uh, my phone rang the other day and I answered it and somebody just sneezed and hung up. And I'm now getting really annoyed by these cold callers. Cold callers. Yep, cold callers. That's there we you. go. <laughs> there we go. If people have stayed this far, thank you very much for for being with us for for nine episodes of season two for Seth Showdown. Uh, we yep. have Colin we and have, I are going to take a break now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will take a break. Uh, we do have stuff already planned for season three, so we are yes. predicting that we will be renewed. Um, we, will be, <laughs> we will be. We will be. If talking you about have things, security. oh, I wanted to give the spiel. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you have things that you want us to talk about on this podcast, questions you have for us to entertain, Colin and I can be found on LinkedIn. We can be found in the Better IT Slack community. Um, I think, I don't know. Are you on Twitter? I'm not on Twitter. No, no, I, no. I left Twitter, Twitter no. a long time ago. Or you can leave a comment on our YouTube channel. That also works. Yep. So yep. Yep. Please reach out yeah. to us. Let us know what questions you have, what kinds of things you want us to talk about. Um, yeah, we've got some good stuff lined up for season three, but we don't have a whole a whole season planned yet. So no. um, definitely let us know. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Rose, again for your time. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And this has been the last episode, season two of SAS Showdown. See y'all. Produced by the Tab Geeks Network. Enjoy all of our shows on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Tab Geeks. Join our exclusive, free, no sponsors allowed Slack community and sign up for our newsletter at tabgeeks.com.